Hey, this is Lee. Uh, several people were interested in a tutorial of how to make your own um, mug or uh, tapered cup template. So the reason you might want to do this, usually sellers, like if you go online and say, I'm going to buy these sublimation mugs, and usually the seller will have a template that you can use to um, to make the, uh, the the sublimation for the mug or the cup or whatever. Sometimes they're not right. Sometimes it's in a file format that you don't know how to use. Um, sometimes the scale gets messed up and it turns out to be the wrong size. Um, and sometimes you buy a mug somewhere and you don't have, like maybe you want to make a paper wrap around it for a party or something, like a solo cup, um, and you don't have the template for it, but I'm going to show you how you can make one. Um, so it basically just comes down to geometry, which I loved in high school, but um, I don't really remember much of it. Um, what I do know is that you could use geometry to find the surface area of a uh, truncated cone. And I didn't remember this was called a truncated cone. I had to Google it, but that's what it's called, a truncated cone. And to do this, uh, there are you could you could do the math or you could go online to templatemaker.nl which is a really cool site it's got all these different templates you can play with for making paper cuts and all sorts of things like that but they have one for a truncated cone which is great all you do is you have to enter the top diameter the bottom diameter and the height of the truncated cone that you want to um, make a template for and so you can do this in millimeters, centimeters, or inches. And there's other websites that do this. What I like about this one is when it generates your template, you can put it in all these different file formats and it will tell you a bunch of information about the truncated cone. Um, if you look at a truncated cone, the geometry of it is, if you were to set this down on a table, this thing right here, and roll it around, the top would make a circle of a specific diameter and the bottom would make a circle of a specific diameter and that's what this is calculating for us so um, we can generate and it'll tell us that the once we generate this template and open it up in Inkscape it will tell us what the these circle diameters are um, not the cir not the diameter of the cup we can just measure that but it will tell you the diameter of the circle this would make if you were to put it on a table and roll it around so um, and that's what you need to do this that was long-winded, sorry. So I'm just gonna show you, we'll start with this shot glass here because there's less things to think about. The mug has a handle, the shot glass doesn't. Um, so for the mug, you're gonna have to modify the template a little bit to make a space for the handle. You could do that by hand. You could just make your template and then cut a sliver off the edge um, to make it fit. Or you can do it when you're making the template and just make it nice and easy and perfect. So let's start with the shot glass. So the shot glass, remember from the, the website, we want the diameter of the top, the diameter of the bottom, and the height of the cup from where it sits on the table. So when you're measuring the height of the cup, you are not measuring this diagonal length. You are measuring the length from the top straight down to the table, like so, okay? All right, so I measured the top of my shot glass was 48 millimeters, the bottom was 34 millimeters, and then the height of the cup was 55 millimeters. And I just, I'm formerly in the sciences, so I'm pretty comfortable working with metric measurements. Um, if you're not, you can definitely use inches. Um, so let me go to that, that uh, the website now, and we'll enter these um, measurements in. Okay, so the top of the uh, glass shot glass was 48 millimeters. The bottom was, I gotta look at my little piece of paper, 34, and then the height was 55. All right, so that's what our template is looking like so far. This gives you a little flap. Now this is like if you were going to make little party, uh, party wraps for your solo cups, you'd want a flap for gluing. We don't want a flap for gluing, so I'm just gonna make that zero. And you want to just leave all of this stuff as it is. I don't know what perforation length is, but I'm going to change that to zero just in case, because I don't know. Okay, so we've entered that. We don't want a glue flap. This all doesn't matter except for possibly perforation length, which I don't know. Let's make a file format SVG and say create. Okay, so that was created.
Okay, so back to Inkscape. We're in, you can just open a file. And one thing I will tell you before we import anything, let me just close all of this. Um, things open. I'm going to leave that one open. Okay, for this you're going to want all of your snapping tools turned on, or almost all of them. Um, so the way the snapping tools works, this top one is global. It turns everything, toggles everything on or off. Uh, light gray is off. Dark gray is everything is on. Now you can go through each of these is a different section that does different things. And if you hover over it tells you what that snapping particular snapping tool does. So you can globally turn all of these on or off. You can globally turn all of these on and off, and then these right here. And then you can go through and you can deselect specific ones. Just for this, I'm just everything on, everything on. Okay, so now we want to import that file that we just downloaded. So file, import, and it went straight to my downloads folder because that's how I have my computer set up. And this is it right here. You can see it gives you cone, diameter of 34, diameter of 48, and height of 55. That's just to keep track of your, um, of your measurements and files you've generated. So I'm going to open that and say include it as an SVG and just leave everything the way it is and say OK. And so here is our template right there. Okay, this is all, if I look down here, it tells me that's a group of four objects. So I'm going to ungroup that a couple of times. I'm just going to ungroup it until there's no groups left. And zoom in a little. And I'm going to delete that text and the copyright text and this dividing middle line. And now I'm going to turn this so that it's perpendicular. And it's hard to get it exactly perpendicular like this. And this is why we have snapping on. So I'm going to pull out a guide. If I click on the ruler and drag, click and drag, and I've got snapping turned on. So that will snap. My computer's being finicky. <coughs> snap right to that point right there. And then I will pull one down from the top and snap to that point right there. Then I'm going to click on this and then click again to show the rotation handles in the center of rotation. I'm going to take that center of rotation and drag it so it snaps right onto that point right there. And then I'm just going to turn this so that, and sometimes this, I'm going to zoom in a little, snap it exactly so that it's right there and sometimes that might not so you it, it, if, if you're having trouble snapping that you can turn off snapping and get it pretty close like that and then turn on snapping and just bump it oh my gosh the rest of the way like that okay so now it's exactly perpendicular um, on your page and that will make it easy when you bring your photo in. If you wanted to, um, this would be a fine template for the shot glass. Um, it should wrap all the way around it. There might be a little bit of overlap depending on how accurate your measurements were. Um, and it's going to go right to the top and it's going to go right to the bottom. So you could use it like that if you wanted to, and you could trim uh, manually with scissors once you cut it out. Or you can go ahead and adjust this a little bit in um, Inkscape. Like say I want to add a border on the top and a border on the bottom. Okay, so um, if you want to do a quick trim of the top and bottom, that makes it, it, makes it really convenient that the, we left these measurements here. Because what we need to do, this is telling us that, remember I say if you put the cone on the table, the shot glass on the table and roll it around, the top will make a circle of a particular diameter and the bottom will make a, circula, a circle of a particular diameter. The, 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 the template maker gives you the measurements of those circles. So that makes it really easy. I can just make a circle, click on my circle tool, hold down shift and control to make a perfect circle. And I don't want it to have any fill and I'm gonna make it pink so I can see it. Now my stroke style here, I've got set to 0.1 centimeters just so I can see it. Okay, so now I wanna make that the diameter of the bottom the top circle, which the radius is 190.09. So I'm going to come up here and change my measurements to millimeters. 
and I'm going to type in that measurement, 190.09, but that's the radius, so I want it to be the diameter, so I'll multiply it times 2. You can see I put in there times 2. I love that about Inkscape, you don't have to do the math. And then I'm going to lock the proportion so it enlarges the circle both horizontally and vertically. Okay, and then that should snap right to that circle diameter right there. Now I can do the same. I'm going to duplicate that circle, and now I'm going to uh, make it the diameter of the smaller circle. So that is 134.65 times 2. Okay, so there's our other one. I can select these two and center them, and that'll be right on the... See how it's right on the template. So, all right, now what we want to do, use these two circles we just made to adjust the border. If I take this circle, and for this I'm going to turn off snapping tools. If I hold down Shift and Control and shrink that circle just a little bit, and you can measure this if you want. You could put a little line in there, like say you want your, your border to be five millimeters. You could definitely measure that. I'm just eyeballing it right now to make the video not quite so long. And then you can do that one right there. Make that a little bigger. And then all you got to do is use your two circles to trim the template. So let's say I'm going to use this one uh, to trim the bottom. I select both and do path division. Now I can get rid of that. And then I select this one and the template and do path division. And there, there's my template. Okay. So, and then I can get rid of this. I don't need that anymore. All right. Then I will come back and show a separate video for the mug because it's getting pretty long.